Hello viewers, I Nilo Fazargam welcomes you again to a fresh episode on differentiation. In today's episode, we shall understand the concept of limit and continuity and discuss the properties of continuous functions. Also after going through the script, you should be able to understand the concept of differentiation and know how to compute derivative of a function and know some standard results of differentiation. To begin with, we shall first start with the concept of limit. Let x be a variable in a function fx and k be a constant. If function f gets nearer and nearer to some quantity l, as x gets nearer and nearer to k, we say limit of f of x as x approaches k is l and write it as limit x goes to k of function f of x is equal to l. So by xk, we read it as xk as x approaches to k. We mean that x assumes values nearer and nearer to k, but x is not equal to k. Left hand limit, we say that x approaches k from left if x approaches k by taking values less than k and we write it as xk negative minus. Now right hand limit will be we say that x approaches k from right if x approaches k by taking values greater than k and write it as xk plus. For example, let f of x is equal to x square and k is equal to 2. The numerical approach to guess limit x goes to 2 of x square is as follows. So we have taken all the values for x and on these values we have taken the corresponding values of fx. So if it's 1.5 then f of x is 2.25, It's if uh, x is 1.9 it is 3.61, then if x is 2.1 it is 4.41 and then if x is 2.5 it's going to be 6.25. Hence, we infer that for x sufficiently close to 2, x square can be made sufficiently close to 4. That is, limit x goes to 2 of x square is equal to 4. This fact is true for every polynomial function. That is, for every polynomial function, limit x goes to k of f of x is equal to f of k. For example, limit x goes to 4 of x square plus 2x plus 1 is equal to 4 square plus 2 into 4 plus 1 that is equal to 16 plus 8 plus 1 that is equal to 25. The first one here comes is limit x goes to a of the function f of x plus g of x is equal to limit x goes to a of a function f of x plus limit x goes to a of a function g of x. Second theorem is limit x goes to a of a function f of x minus g of f is equal to limit x goes to a of the function f of x minus limit x goes to a of a function g of x. The third theorem here is limit x goes to a of a function k times f of x is equal to k times limit x goes to a of a function f of x. The fourth theorem here, limit x goes to a of function f of x divided by g of x is equal to limit x goes to a of a function f of x divided by limit x goes to a of a function g of x provided that limit x goes to a of a function g of x is not equal to 0. Now let's see the example number 1 over here. Evaluate the following limits. The first one, limit x goes to 3 of x square plus 3x plus 4. Second one, limit x goes to 2 of x square minus 5x plus 6 divided by x square minus 9x plus 18. The third one, limit x goes to 4 of x cube minus 64 divided by x minus 4. Now let's see the solution to this one by one. 
the first one limit x goes to 3 x square plus 3x plus 4 is equal to 3 square plus 3 into 3 plus 4 that is equal to 9 plus 9 plus 4 that is equal to 22 the second one limit x goes to 2 of x of square minus 5x plus 6 divided by x square minus 9x plus 18 so this is nothing but this is equal to a limit x goes to 2 of x minus 2 into x minus 3 divided by x minus 3 into x minus 6 that is nothing but that is equal to limit x goes to 2 of x minus 2 divided by x minus 6 which is equal to 2 minus 2 uh, divided by 2 minus 6 which is equal to 0 divided by minus 4 which is equal to 0. Now the third one limit x goes to 4 of x cube minus 64 divided by x minus 4 this is equal to limit x goes to 4 of x cube minus 4 to the power 3 divided by x minus 4 this is equal to limit x goes to 4 of x minus 4 into x square plus 4x plus 16 the whole thing is divided by x minus 4 so this is equal to limit x goes to 4 of x square plus 4x plus 16 which is equal to 4 square plus 4 into 4 plus 16 which is equal to 48 let f be a function and a be a point in the domain of f the function f is said to be a continuous at a if the limit of the function at a exists and is same as the value of the function at a. In other words, a function f is said to be a continuous at x equals to a of its domain if and only if the first situation f of x is defined at x equals to a. Second condition limit x goes to minus a of f of x is equal to limit x goes to plus a of the function f of x. Now the third condition is limit x goes to a of a function f of x is always equal to f of a. Now if x is equal to a plus h then as x a h o and therefore f of x is continuous at x equals to a. If limit h goes to 0 of a function f of a plus h is equal to f of a. That is, a function f of x is continuous at x equals to a. If f of a plus 0 is equal to f of a minus 0 is equal to f of a. The function is said to be continuous in an open or a closed interval if it is continuous at every point of the interval. The graph of functions which are continuous at all real numbers can be drawn without lifting the pencil. A function is said to be discontinuous if it is not a continuous function. In other words, a function f of x is discontinuous at x equals to a in any one of the following cases. The first case, f of a is not defined and in the, the second case is limit x goes to a of f of x does not exist. And the third case is f of a is defined and limit x goes to a of f of x exist but the two are not equal. Now let's come to the concept of continuity in an interval. A function is continuous in an interval a lesser than equal to x lesser than equal to b if it is continuous at every point of that interval. Thus f of x is continuous at x equals to a if f of a is equal to limit x goes to plus a of f of x and also continuous at x equals to b if f of b is equal to limit x goes to minus b of f of x. If f of x and g of x are two continuous functions at a point or in an interval then we have these following conditions. The first one f of x plus g of x is continuous second condition f of x minus g of x is continuous again third condition c into f of x is also continuous where c is a real constant number the fourth condition is when f of x gets multiplied by g of x it is also a continuous the fifth one f of x divided by g of x is continuous in its domain now, let's see the second example here show that the function f of x is equal to 4x square plus 6x minus 3 is a continuous at x equals to 1. Solution to this is f of x is equal to 4x square plus 6x minus 3. So that is equal to limit x goes to 1 f of x is equal to limit x goes to 1 4x square plus 6x minus 3. So we are taking limit x goes to 1 on both the sides which is equal to 4 into 1 to the power 
2 plus 6 into 1 minus 3 which is equal to 4 plus 6 minus 3 that is equal to 7. Also we know that f of 1 will be equal to 4 into 1 to the power 2 plus 6 into 1 minus 3 which is equal to 7. Now from these first two equations we find that limit x goes to 1 f of x will be equal to f of 1. Therefore we say that f of x is a continuous at x equals to 1. Now let us see the third example here discuss the continuity of the function. In the first case when f of x is equal to 2x we also have a condition which says that if x is lesser than 2. In the second case when f of x is equal to 4 we have the condition if x is equal to 2 and in the third one f of x is equal to x plus 2 if x is greater than 2 at x equals to 2. Now let us see the solution to this one by one. The first one if we take f of 2 is equal to 4 this implies that limit x goes to minus 2 will of f of x will be equal to limit x goes to minus 2 of 2 into x. So that is equal to limit x h goes to 0 into 2 into 2 minus h. So we are putting over here x is equal to 2 minus h as x goes to 2 and h goes to 0. So that is equal to limit h goes to 0 of 4 minus 2 h which is equal to 4. Now let us see the other side limit x goes to 2 plus of f of x will be equal to limit x goes to 2 plus of x plus 2. So we see this is equal to limit h goes to 0 of 2 plus h plus 2. So we, here we are putting x is equal to 2 plus h as a, x goes to 2 and h goes to 0. So this will be equal to 4 finally. So we find that limit x goes to 2 minus f of x is equal to limit x goes to 2 plus f of x which is equal to f of 2. Therefore we say that f of x is continuous at x equals to 2. We know that all expressions like kilometer per hour, price per area, etc. for function represents rates. The rate of change of functions of one variable with respect to another on which it depends is called the derivative of the function. The process of finding the derivative of the independent and the dependent variables in terms of limit involving the increment is called as differentiation. Let y is equal to f of x be a function of x. The change in the values of the variable x from one value x0 to another value x1 that is the difference between x1 minus x0 is called the increment of x and we denote it by delta x or h. Similarly, the increment of y or f of x is denoted by delta y or delta f of x that is f of x plus delta x minus f of x or f of x plus h minus f of x. This increment of x which is an independent variable or y which is a dependent variable may be positive or negative. Therefore, the rate of change is given by delta y upon delta x is equal to increment in the value of y divided by increment in the value of x which is nothing but that is equal to f of x plus delta x minus f of x divided by delta x or we can say f of x plus h minus f of x the whole thing divided by h. Now as delta x approaches 0 that is x0 from either side this ratio gives a definite finite limit then this limit is called the differential coefficient or the derivative of f of x with respect to x. Symbolically the differential coefficient of y with respect to x is denoted by dy upon dx or f dash x or d by dx of f of x. Thus dy by dx or f dash x is equal to limit delta x goes to 0 of f of x plus delta x minus f of x the whole thing divided by delta x or limit h goes to 0 of the function f of x plus h minus f of x the whole thing divided by h. The derivative of a function is also called its differential coefficient. So in other words differentiation is a process of finding the differential coefficient. Now there are few things to note over here. The first thing is the right hand derivative and the left hand derivative must both exist and equal for the differential coefficient or the derivative f dash x to exist. That is limit h goes to plus 0 of f of x plus h minus f of x 
divided by h should be equal to limit x goes to minus 0 of f of x plus h minus f of x the whole thing divided by h. Now, the second thing to note over here is the differential coefficient of f of x at any fixed value a of x is given by f dash a that is equal to limit h goes to 0 of the function f of a plus h minus f of a divided by h provided that this limit exists. Now, the third thing to note here is if f of x has a finite derivative at x equals to a then f of x is continuous at x equals to a. On the other hand, if f of x is continuous at x equals to a, it is not necessary that it should be differentiable. Now, let f of x be a function and f dash x its derivative at any point x. The value f dash a provided it exists is called the derivative of the function at x equals to a. Now, if f dash a does not exist, we say that f of x is not a differentiable at x equals to a. The derivative of a function can be calculated by the following four steps given over here. The first step is take f of x and find f of x plus delta x first. The second point, find f of x plus delta x minus f of x. And in the third step, divide the expression by delta x to obtain f of x plus delta x minus f of x divided by delta x. The whole thing is divided by delta x. The fourth step is then find the required derivative that will limit delta x goes to 0 f of x plus delta x minus f of x the whole thing divided by delta x. Now, let us come to the next example which is example 4 differentiate from first principle the following function. The function is 2x square plus 3x minus 4. So, we are finding solution to this and we see that let f of x is equal to 2x square plus 3x minus 4. Then we see that f of x plus h is equal to 2 times x plus h the whole square plus 3 into x plus h minus 4. So, by definition we have here f dash x is equal to limit h goes to 0 of f x plus h minus f of x the whole thing is divided by h. So, that is equal to limit h goes to 0 2 into x plus h the whole square plus 3 into x plus h minus 4 the whole thing is subtracted from 2x square plus 3x minus 4 the whole thing is divided by h again. So, this is equal to limit h goes to 0 2 times x square plus 2x h plus h square plus 3 into x plus h minus 4 the whole thing is subtracted by 2x square plus 3x minus 4 the whole thing is divided by h again. So, that is equal to limit h goes to 0 4xh plus 2h square plus 3h the whole thing is divided by h. So, this is equal to limit h goes to 0 h times 4x plus 2h plus 3 the whole thing is divided by again h. So, we see we can cancel h from the numerator and the denominator since h is not equal to 0. So, we finally have limit h goes to 0 of 4x plus 2h plus 3 that is equal to 4x plus 0 plus 3 that is equal to 4x plus 3. Therefore, we can write d by dx of 2x square plus 3x minus 4 that is equal to 4x plus 3. The first one is d by dx of any constant is always equal to 0. d by dx of e to the power x is equal to e to the power x. The next one d by dx of x to the power n is equal to n times x to the power of n minus 1. d by dx a to the power of x is equal to a to the power x times log to the base of e of a. The next one d by dx of log of x is equal to 1 upon x. The last one d by dx under the root x is equal to half times under the root of x. Some of the rules of differentiation. The first one is scalar multiplication rules. Now, we have a theorem on this rule. Derivative of a constant multiplied by a function is equal to the constant multiplied by the derivative of the function. If k is a constant and f of x is a function of x such that f dash x exists, 
then d by dx of k into f of x is equal to k times d by dx of f of x. We have illustrations over here d by dx of 7 x to the power 5 which is equal to 7 into 5 times into x to the power 5 minus 1 which is equal to 35 x to the power 4. Second illustration d by dx of 3 by 4 e to the power 4 x that is equal to 3 by 4 times d by dx e to the power 4 x which is equal to 3 e to the power 4 x. The third one d by dx of 3 a to the power 3 x is equal to 3 times 3 a to the power 3 x into log of e to the a that is equal to 9 into a to the power 3 x into log of e to the a. Now let us come to the second one sum and difference rule. So we have a theorem on this derivative of the sum or the difference of the two differentiable function is the sum or the difference of the derivatives respectively. If f and g be two functions of x, then d by dx of f of plus minus g is equal to d by dx of f of x plus minus d by dx of g of x. Provided that both the derivative d by dx of f of x and d by dx of g of x, both of them exist. Let us see illustration over here. d by dx of x square plus log x is equal to d by dx of x of square plus d by dx of log of x which is equal to 2x plus 1 by x that is equal to 2x square plus 1 the whole thing divided by x. Second one d by dx of e to the power 2x plus 2 to the power x is equal to d by dx of e to the power 2x plus d by dx of 2 to the power x is equal to 2 e to the power 2x plus 2 to the power x log of e 2. d by dx of 5x to the power 5 minus e to the power 5x is equal to d by dx of 5x to the power 5 minus d by dx e to the power 5x which is equal to 5 times d by dx x to the power 5 minus 5 e to the power 5x that is equal to 5 times 5x to the power 5 minus 1 minus 5 e to the power 5x that is equal to 5 times 5x to the power 4 minus e to the power 5x. Now let us come to the next rule that is product rule. The theorem based on this rule says that if f and g are two differentiable functions of x and y is equal to f into g then d by dx of y x will be equal to f of x into d by dx of g of x plus g of x into d by dx of f of x where y of x is equal to f of x into g of x. Let us see illustration over here d by dx 2 to the power x into x to the power 5 is equal to 2 to the power x into d by dx of x to the power 5 plus x to the power 5 d by dx of 2 to the power x. So, this is equal to 2 to the power of x into 5 x to the power 4 x plus x to the power 5 into 2 to the power x into log of e 2. So, that is equal to 2 to the power x into x to the power 4 into 5 plus x log of 2 to the base e. Next d by dx of e to the power x into log of x will be e to the power x into d by dx of log of x plus log of x into d by dx of e to the power x. So, that is equal to e to the power x into 1 by x plus log of x into e to the power x that is equal to e to the power x into log of x plus 1 by x. Now, let us come to the next rule that is the question rule. So, the theorem on this is if f of x and g of x are two differentiable functions of x and g of x is not equal to 0 then y of x is equal to f of x divided by g of x is also differentiable and d by dx of y of x will be equal to g of x into d by dx f of x minus f of x into d by dx of g of x the whole thing is divided by g of x square. Provided that the derivative of f of x as well as g of x also exist here. Now, let us come to the next rule which is chain rule. This rule is a derivative of a function of a function. Now, the theorem on this is if y is equal to f of z is a differentiable function of z and z is equal to g of x is a differentiable function of x then y is called the function of x 
and we write it as dy dx is equal to dy by dz into dz by dx which is equal to f dash z into dz by dx where y is equal to f of z. Now let us see the next one which is logarithmic differentiation. Logarithmic differentiation is a process of finding out derivative by taking logarithm in the first instance. When the function to be differentiated involves a function in its power or when the function is the product of number of functions, this process is convenient and efficient to be used. Now what are implicit functions here? Let us see. An expression in x and y in which y is not expressed directly in terms of x is called an implicit function of x and y. A function in the form f of x and y is equal to 0 where y cannot be directly defined as a function of x is called an implicit function of x. For example, x square into y square plus 3xy plus y is equal to 0 is an implicit function. In such a case, we differentiate each term of this function with respect to x and then solve for dy by dx. Sometimes x and y are expressed in terms of another variable say t. The involved equations are also known as parametric equations and the third variable which is involved is called as a parameter. There is a theorem on this. If t is the parameter in which x and y are expressed, then dy by dx will be equal to dy by dt into dt by dx. Derivative of function y or f of x with respect to x is denoted by dy by dx or f dash x. If dy by dx or f dash x is also differentiable then its derivative is called the second derivative of the function and it is denoted by dy by dx of dy by dx or d square y by dx square or f double dash x. Similarly derivative of dx square y and dx square or f double dash x is called the third derivative of the function and it is denoted by d cube y by dx cube or f triple dash of x and so on. Let us see an illustration over here. Differentiate log of sin of x with respect to cos of x. Solution to this is let u equals to log of sin of x and v equals to cos of x. So therefore we have du by dx is equal to 1 upon sin x into d by dx of sin of x which is equal to 1 upon sin x into cos of x that is nothing but cot of x and dv by dx is equal to minus sin of x. Therefore du by dv will be equal to du by dx into dx by dv. So that is equal to cot of x into minus 1 upon sin of x which is nothing but that is equal to minus cot of x divided by sin of x. So that brings us to the conclusion. So let us now quickly summarize what we have learned today. We have learned the concept of limit, continuity and differentiation. We now know how to compute derivative of a function by the first principle, derivative of function by the application of formulas. Also we have understood how to use logarithmic differentiation to find derivative of certain algebraic expressions. So that brings us to the end of today's episode. We finally know the basic laws of differentiation and some standard results of differentiation. We will see you again discussing about our next topic on application of differentiation in business. Till then, have a nice time. Thank you. Take care and bye.
Thank you.